Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm looking at the Leuchtturm 1917, but this is the 120 GSM um, notebook. Normal Leuchtturm paper, as we would get in like the journals and the sum lines and things like that, is about 80 GSM. So this is their sort of superior paper as you see there, uh, with extra low transparency. So this isn't a review of the notebook. Um, I just want to talk about the quality of the paper, and I'm going to put it under some tests. Uh, but just so you can see, it's A5 medium. This is the ruled notebook, 120 GSM, low transparency, pagination, uh, 203 pages, acid-free, um, two bookmarks, which is nice, a table of contents and a pocket in the back. It says here, written or drawn content retains its contours and does not shine through. Developed by Leuchtturm 1917 and made in Germany, the 120 uh, GSM, or grams per meter squared, uh, paper has a smooth surface and low transparency. It makes it versatile and suited for use with fountain pens, brush pens, or markers. Yeah, I'm gonna open this up and uh, we'll do some writing samples. Okay, so just do a quick, very quick sort of walkthrough. Um, you get the little information in the front there, space for your information, please return to. Um, and then we get the table of contents, which is very light print on this paper, which I enjoy. Um, you know, with page and then the subject. And then each uh, page, as we can see, just opening up to a random one here, uh, has a little date section at the top. And then uh, the page number and I said this is the lined version I think it's also available in dot it comes with all the usual sort of Leuchtturm stuff you know the uh, archival stickers and all those kinds of things which I was just tuck into the back for the book back of the book for later the little uh, pocket there of course um, and so I always do my ink tests uh, in the back uh, because I tend to work from the front of the notebook with the exception of the index so I'll do ink tests here and then this one has got a table of contents built in, but in a normal notebook, I would just sort of make the back pages the index um, so that you can work towards them and not have to like keep a certain amount of pages spare. So let's do some writing. So I'm, I've am i already done a uh, a page on regular Leuchtturm and I'm basically going to copy that page uh, onto this so we can see the writing experience uh, and uh, show the comparison. So starting with a Lamy Safari with Lamy Dark Lilac. This is the Leuchtturm It's pretty smooth, this paper. Um, it feels certainly smoother than, just a touch smoother than the regular Leuchtturm, which is, I'm not complaining about whatsoever. I think it's great. Um, next we have Sailor Blue Black. In a Sailor Pro Gear. With a a gold, uh, this is a hard medium nib. Okay, so those are the two fountain pens I'm doing the main part of the writing with. Next, I have a really cruddy old uh, Jin Hao here with a uh, Noodles Bay State Blue. So I'm just going to write Noodles Bay State Blue here, if I can get it out. last legs this pen <laughs> it's been inked up with this ink for like two years um, and it's had one refill in that time and it's sort of all clogged up and I, I actually don't even know if, it, if it's repairable beyond this point and for a pen that was only a couple of dollars I'm kind of just considering unfortunately uh, binning it okay then we have a Pilot Custom uh, 74 here, but it's more. this is more of the water test. This is a Robert Oster ink. Um, it is, I think it's like Blue Water Sky. 
or Australia Sky or Bondi Blue maybe? I think it's Bondi Blue actually, now I think about it. Beautiful inks of Robert Osters, lots of great blues. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do with the fountain pens. Now I'm gonna uh, write with a couple of other kinds of pen. Um, and we'll start here with the Uniball uh, Signo. Um, and this is the broad blue black. One of my favorite uh, non fountain pens, that one. And another non fountain pen favorite here is the um, Pilot G2. Cannot write today, G2. This is the G2 Pro, but it has the same regular G2 refill. Um, and this is the 0 0.07 or 0 0.7 uh, black. There. Okay. Now, a, re a regular old Bic ballpoint pen. And uh, while I'm here, I'll just write highlighter because that's what's coming next, which we will highlight over that with this uh, Faber-Castell text liner. It's one of my favorite kinds of highlighter, nice and compact, super reliable, and also has a really great sort of capacity, uh, which I enjoy. Okay, a pencil, a Palomino Blackwing. Uh, volume, this is the 19, and then I'll do a squiggle there, and then using the eraser on the top, which is what I did on the other one, just do a quick run over uh, that section there. Okay, a couple of things left to do. The standard, for me, the Sharpie marker. These are an alcohol-based marker, so they eat through uh, everything. Um, it's just a so kind of like a control. Um, the other thing about the base state blue ink is that it's quite an aggressive ink, so you will find that uh, it will sort of it, it will eat through a lot of paper uh, and bleed through, uh, and therefore it's actually good to sort of test because uh, once again it's a control in a way. Um, and then I just have a Faber Castell uh, Pit Artist brush pen in one of the uh, I think it's the dark grey, warm grey, one of the warm greys. There's a few of those. Okay, and then the very last thing to do, just with a water brush pen, I'm just going to run over there and then do a little bit of a squiggle on these just to see sort of what happens. Because it does say, you know, for brush pens and all that kind of stuff, and with thicker paper, a lot of people will want to use this, uh, particularly in the uh, dot version for things like bullet journaling, with some creative input uh, as well. So it's good to see how these sorts of things respond. Okay, so we've actually probably got enough sort of like evidence here to see how this paper uh, goes. And uh, as you can see, it actually holds up super well. Even the Sharpie marker really doesn't come through much at all. Uh, we've got a little bit of sort of bleed poking through there with the uh, water brush and a couple of spots maybe here with the Lamy Duck Lilac. Base State Blue is working fairly well, and everything else has performed really nicely. You can barely see anything coming through there. That one of the problems that we've, a lot of people have had with Leuchtturm is the ghosting. Um, and if I pull up this uh, other page I've done now, so you can see I've kind of uh, basically, with the exception of the fact that this is a B5, I've done the exact same kind of thing. Um, you know, rubbing out the pencil, the Sharpie marker, the water test, stuff like that. Um, and as you can see, this is a lighter weight paper, as it's the 80 GSM, and it certainly feels like it's a bit smoother than 120, which is, as I said, I'm really happy about. Um, this paper feels really nice, and I actually enjoyed writing on it. Um, I think the performance looks pretty good if we look at the reverse of both of these pages uh, now next to each other. As you can see, like the ghosting on the uh, 80 is quite high uh, and a little bit more sort of comes through from a few of these, like Base 8 Blue comes through, the marker comes through, whereas this doesn't come through on the 120. So while paper weight isn't always going to be a deciding factor on the quality of paper, one thing it will do is, generally speaking, is it will improve things like ghosting. You will not see as much through the page. It is generally going to be heavier, thicker paper. Doesn't mean the quality is going to be any better because 
paper weight is about the weight, not about the weave, and it's the weave of a paper that makes the difference. So actually, this is a, by the feel of the paper, it's definitely a higher, it's a higher weave, it's not as sort of toothy, uh, and so uh, that's why we get a little bit better response from some of the bleeding, because there's like 160 GSM paper that a, that a fountain pen will just eat through. So this is, um, this is impressive, I'm really happy with this. So, um, looking at the two, you can see there is a distinct improvement in performance. They are a little more expensive and they are certainly harder to come by. Um, I managed to find some through uh, Penn City here in Melbourne, um, but stock is generally fairly low across the board on the 120. I really hope that it gets picked up more. I think for bullet journaling and things like that, a bull uh, the dot grid version of this would be great. It's got all those bullet journal features, page numbers, um, index, all that kind of stuff. And with higher quality paper like this, fountain pen users and marker users and things can actually really uh, get some decent sort of life out of this. Things like those Copic markers and things, they're still gonna eat through, they're alcohol based. So they'll perform like the Sharpie. Um, so you will see them a bit more and they will sort of tend to perhaps bleed a bit more. But for everyday pens and markers and things, I think this is a, a lovely option. So this was the Leuchtturm 120 GSM notebook. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Please like and subscribe, hit the notifications button. Please uh, you know, get in touch if there's any products you'd like me to look at. If you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your notebooks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.